Same, Rosalind. Same. <laughs> okay, so we start with. Oh, this is an inverse, right? Inverse. So, what does inverse mean? Um. This is really y, right? Inverse so gonna, means it's really y. We're gonna switch the x. Did we learn inverse last year? Mm-hmm. Oh. Sorry. For the y. Okay. We just switch them. Is that y or x? So this is x. This is oh. y. What we're doing is we're switching them. And then we're going to solve for y. So I have to add 5. And I have to add 5. I get x plus 5 is equal to negative 5 thirds y, right? Then I got to get y alone. How do I get y alone? You divide. Yeah. And multiply at the same time. O P P. You divide. I explain it. I take it for you frame it. Oh, it's for other people. So people scratch the temple. The other feet. Well, that's not that simple. What? Uh, okay. Uh oh. Okay. So we got three and five. And okay. hey, a negative makes a two negatives make a positive, right? Freestyle part two. Yeah, two negatives make a positive. Woo. 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 Right now, this whole thing gets multiplied by that. By negative 3 over 5. And what that does is it cancels this out, right? Right. It just leaves a y. Right. And so then the y will equal. Da 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 da. What is negative 3 fifths times x? Negative 3 fifths x. Perf. Just kidding. Oh. Perf. And then what is negative 3 fifths times 5? Don't know. Uh. Try again. Think of it like this. Negative 3 fifths times 5 over 1. Negative 8 over 5. Um, Just joking, I don't know. Times, times. Negative 3. Yay! Woo, Ashley! Wonderful job. What is that? What? And we're done. And we're done. And we're done. Take it to the left. Take it to the left. Uh. Because we're going to whip. No, no, no. And they, they. Stop. Okay. <laughs> what? All right. Wait. <clears throat> Don't start the next one yet because I'm almost done writing this down, okay? I'm trying to figure out what that is in the green by the Y. He's asking me. Negative 5 over 3. <laughs>
But remember, that's n squared, negative n squared. What's, what's 1 squared? Negative n squared. Yeah. So what's 1 squared? Oh. 1, 2, 1. 1, one. right? Whoa. And negative 1 would be negative 1, right? Minus 4 would be minus 5, right? But there's an easier way to do this. I could just plug in 1 in the G. So it's 1 squared plus 4. What is 1 squared? 1. 1? One. One? What's 1 plus 4? 5. And then I take 5 and I plug it into F. So that would be negative 5, right? And so that's the same thing, right? Okay. And so to me, it's easier to do it this way than it is to do it this way. Plugging in the function. Does that make sense? So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it into F or into G. So let's plug in 1 into G. What's 1 squared minus 1? What's 1 squared? 1. 1. What's 1 zero. minus 1? Woo. 0. Okay. Now we're going to take 0 we're going to plug it into F. So what is 2 times 0 minus 3? Negative 3. Okay, so what that means is f of g of 1 is equal to negative 3. Whoop, whoop. That's all. So you plug it into the f function, or the g function first, and then you plug it into the f function. Does that make sense? Kind of. Kind of? Now, that is totally different than what they had you, what they really wanted you to do. Remember? 79B. Because remember, I wanted to show you a different one, right? But in 79B, they said find F times G of 1. F times G of 1. And to do that, that's totally different. What we do there is we say F of 1 is equal to 2 times 1 minus 3. What's 2 times 1? 2. 2. What's 2 minus 3? Negative 1. Okay? So f of 1 is negative 1, right? Okay, and then they said <clears throat> g of 1. What's g of 1? Well, g is 1 squared minus 1. What's 1 squared? 1. 1 minus zero. 1? 0. So g of 1 is equal to 0. So we found that first, right? And then what you're going to do here is it says f times g. So we're going to take this f of 1 times the g of 1, which is 0, right, for g, and f was a uh, negative 1. So what's negative 1 times 0? Zero? 0. 0. So that means f times g of 1 equals 